Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. All right. This is our brief Big Ten preview and kind of same story as last year at the top. Uh, you got Michigan and Ohio State as the two clear favorites. And this year, you know, if Penn State, yeah, yeah. If, if Drew Aller is is legit at quarterback, then, then they could definitely be right there in that group. Um, as far as intriguing storylines, for me, the team I'm most intrigued by is Wisconsin heading into the year, just with Luke Fickle. Yeah. You know, maybe the best new hire at head coach in the country. You got Phil Longo at offensive coordinator, arguably the best coordinator hire in the offseason. Um, Tanner Mordecai coming in at quarterback from SMU. And, you know, just the ceiling is very high for the offense. Like they really could unlock i mean you got braylon allen at running back you could unlock the receiving core especially they brought in some um some new pieces there as well so uh i'm just interested to see how that offensive change in philosophy works out yeah i am um, i'm intrigued by i mean obviously the big boys in the east kind of are going to run the show but i'm it's it's this version of the big 10 west it's their last chance to kind of make some noise um before it all changes next year and really, when you look at the West, there's pros and cons to about every team. I mean, anyone technically, I guess, has a chance other than maybe Northwestern, I would say. Um, obviously, Wisconsin, Michael, you touched on it. They have the highest ceiling. But if they falter with all that that kind of newness around them, I'm so curious to see like Iowa. We've talked about that Brian Ferentz situation mm -hmm. uh, with the, the contract situation with is the offense going to be more productive? You would think it could uh, with with um, Cade McNamara coming in, but. It'll be it'll be fun to to follow, see if they have, you know, a competent quarterback can can lead them to better offense. I mean, it's it it's just a weird deal. I, I mean, I'm kind of glad they're getting rid of the divisions if, as far as just if like you're a Big Ten fan. It's just, you know, Ohio State, Michigan and Penn State are like in a class of their own right now. It's just like why the, the Big Ten title game is kind of blah. I mean, whoever wins. Has the been. West is like they're just, they're just gonna get straight up kicked their ass kicked like in the Big Ten title game like whoever you know right like none of the teams in the West I mean you know maybe borderline top be a big twenty five team yeah it's just kind of I don't know it's, I feel like it's two different conferences like just if you win the East you're that's it you win you're good yeah. and it's like it's a competition to see who's the fourth best team in the conference like I don't know I don't know who's fourth best is that that's wide open but yeah for sure um, okay. Let's see here. How about let's get to our surprise teams. What's the Trey, the one team that you think could overachieve? I guess it depends on your your description of this. My surprise is Penn State. And the reason I'm saying this is Fine. because, you know, I obviously it's not a surprise to be good. They just went eleven and two, won the Rose Bowl. But I'm saying they're surprised in that I think they really will close the gap between Ohio State, Michigan, and them. Um, and I think I personally think the East race is going to come down to the final week of the season with them involved. Because uh, their two losses last year were to Ohio State and Michigan, and they weren't really all that competitive in those. And so, we, Michael, I think you, you guys mentioned it. Like It comes down to Drew Aller, in my opinion. Um, you know, Can he live up to the billing? you know, improve the offense compared to what, what Sean Clifford had, because if he does, I love what's around them. Like they just, there's so much talent all around. You got uh, Singleton and Allen, one of the best duos in the duo running backs in the country, chop Robinson at D end. Um, Abdul Carter is the next uh, Micah Parsons at linebacker. There, just had an incredible freshman season. Kalen King is one of the best, like they're loaded. Like I really like, I'm a believer Good in this James line. Franklin squad. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I I I I'm, I can see that for sure. Hope they do. Hope they do. Um, I'm gonna go Illinois again. I'm a big Illinois guy. You are. Um, yeah. Last year you were. I mean, that was a great call. I, yeah. No one saw that coming. I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no one else. Uh, yeah. I just keep doubting Illinois, man. I keep doubting Brett Bielema. I'm not. I, I he's a Big Ten coach, man, and he knows what he's doing. Um, Luke Altmyer's coming in from Ole Miss didn't exactly kill it there, but it doesn't really matter to me, dude. He made freaking Art Sitkowski look decent <laughs> at Illinois, right? So it doesn't matter. Bielema just gets it done. Um, 
so last year they had a pretty good year. They won eight games, but they were they they got unlucky in close games though. They were one and four in one in one score game. So it's like they could have been even better. Um, so I mean the offense is going to be typical Bielema offense, ground and pound, physical. Um, their offensive line looks pretty strong. Um, they'll be smart through the air. It's just what they do. And they're going to be able to rely again on a really, really good defense. They have a stud on the defensive line. Uh, Jerzon Newton is just, he could have been probably a first round pick this year had he declared, Um, but he most certainly should be again following year. He's a stud, bunch of great talent around him as well. Um, I do worry a little bit about the defense just because they lose the defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters. He went to be the head coach at Purdue, but they're hiring from within. You know, Aaron Henry, he was the defensive backs coach prior so he's kind of taken over and i mean he did an amazing job with some great dbs um with in the past couple years so i'm it's gonna be i think it should be a relatively seamless transition so i don't know i'm not sure why they wouldn't be you know do they do they similar team you got chase brown on running back is gone yeah i know and then they lost their what a top five drafty corner but i mean yeah corner doesn't make or break you no, I just, but I, yeah, I think their D yeah, line's gonna no, be good. Yeah, is solid. Yeah. Okay, I'll. Uh, I'm just, go with enough... just, there's just a lot of teams that are so close that the team that doesn't make the mistake to me wins. And Illinois just, they do that. It's a tough physical team. Yeah, they've they've definitely got a chance again. I'm gonna go with another team in the West. I'm gonna say Minnesota as a surprise mm-hmm. team, mm-hmm. just because you know outside of the 2020 weird COVID year. Yeah. Uh, PJ Flex been consistent there, um, and Joe Rossi on the defensive side of the ball, like he's got that side set. He is uh, definitely a, a rising star. And offensively, they've got really good depth in the receiving core with some of the transfers they brought in. Um, they've got a good replacement at running back with Sean Tyler coming in from uh, Western Michigan as a transfer. I thought that was a good pickup. So if Kaliak Manis at quarterback is legit which we don't know you know he played a little no. bit last year like and, tanner morgan was legit yeah I yeah think. i know and 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 kayak manis that you know nice couple uh, last couple games of the season last yeah season. Sure be so fine. there's yeah. there's some hope there then the offense could be a lot better than maybe people are projecting and combine that with rossi's defense then they could be very good now they they play ohio state and michigan out of the that's east brutal. so that's brutal so that kind of prevents me as we get later in the episode from from picking them to win the west but you know yeah. they got a shot yeah that is tough um all right how about uh disappointing team who who do you expect to, to underachieve ryan i'm gonna take the badgers of wisconsin okay. um you know they're not like necessarily the clear favorite but i guess if you did have to pull everybody i think wisconsin is the favorite uh in the west and i don't know i'm not seeing why like this wasn't a very good team last year. They were four and five in Big Ten play. Um, they're changing styles in a huge way. Um, totally drastic change there. Tanner Mordecai is going to be the new quarterback. Yeah, they added some other pieces, but Mordecai, like, oh, okay, well, you know, I mean, he, he he was all right. He was pretty darn good at SMU, but he wasn't amazing. Um, kind of turnover prone. He had twenty two picks in his last twenty four games at SMU, and he's going to take a large jump at least in competition. Big 10 defenses are way better than they, what you see, you know, week in, week out in the AAC. So I'm not sure why he's going to just be all of a sudden really, really good with a new system, new players, new receivers that they've never, you know, been in this type of system. And I, I don't know. I'm just not seeing it that why they're just all the favorites. I think there's too many moving pieces. Um, I kind of like, Oh, I thought with OU last year, too many new, fi- new things. Like I think in the end, it's going to work out. I think, Fickle's going to be great there, and they'll probably get better as the season goes on. And the following year, they might be good, really good. But too many new things. Then not enough proven players on offense and defense. They do lose a couple of key pieces as well. And they're changing styles up a little bit on defense too. So I don't know. I'm not – I don't see why I would pick them as my favorite in the in the conference or in the, in the division. Okay. that's Yeah, you made some interesting points there. Um I'm sorry to do this, but my disappointing pick is going to be Nebraska. I just, how, how can disappointing can we be? We're supposed to suck already, man. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the over under? Isn't it like uh, yeah, maybe like it's a six hard six? Like yeah. yeah, over six. six is favored, and so, six and a half under. I, I'll, I'll say missing out on a bowl game. I'll say you know five and seven will be my pick. I just think Matt Rule's strength is as a developer. He gets 
you know, he brings in his guys. He gets, he has the kind of physical frames that he likes and, and strength and conditioning, they build on that and they just develop. It's hard to do that in one year. And we saw, of course, his, his start at Baylor, different situation, but was, you know, he started out slow there and just kind of built it up. I think that's what will happen at Nebraska. I think that, you know, I eventually think he'll do a good job, but not year one. Jeff Sims at quarterback, I just don't have a lot of faith in him. I know he was in a tough situation at Georgia Tech, but I think he's maybe in a kind of a tough situation at Nebraska. I don't like the offensive coordinator hire, Marcus Satterfield. Um, just yeah. not sure that the talent around around him is is great around Sims. So I don't know. I mean, I like Tony White on defense. I think well, that's one of our ball. best. One of Nebraska's best receivers just quit. He was yeah. going to probably yeah. start. He was quit. So I mean, the receiver core should, core should be horrible. Or I think Billy Kemp is going to be by far Nebraska's best receiver, and he was okay at Virginia, but he wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't see a whole lot to like here, so I'm saying they miss a bowl. Yeah, again, not bullish this year. All I'm right. Um, my disappointment again. Take take it uh, however you want. I'm going to say Maryland. Uh, now they're not, of course, expected to win the East. Um, but there's some buzz. So they got Talia Tagovailoa back. They don't finish fourth in the East. That's disappointing for them. Yeah, and they they, I mean, Talia has set a bunch of Maryland records, and Loxley has certainly improved Maryland. But I think he maybe hit a ceiling, um, and they could potentially fall back this year. They were seven and six two years ago, eight and five last year. They finished 29th in SP plus. That's really good. I don't see that. Um, I, they Talia loses four of his top seven receivers. But the biggest issue I have for them is on their offensive and defensive line. They were kind of decimated. Uh, they they only return a couple guys on on both sides that are that played you know meaningful snaps. Uh, I just I don't know if Talia can get much better than he already is to overcome these obstacles. And I will admit their schedule isn't terribly difficult. But I'm just kind of looking at in, in terms of. Uh, team strength here. I, I think they're going to fall. The over under for them is seven and a half, with a slight favorite towards the under, and and that's really where I'm I'm leaning under. Can they beat one of the top three? You know, that's yeah. Can they be competitive and can they win one? That'll be one out of three. We'll and then yeah, they seven and a half is a pretty high over under when you is. when you've got they those a, they, three on your schedule. They have a very pretty soft non conference. They must. Okay. So yeah. All right. How about let's see? Let's get to our championship picks. Um, Big Ten East. I mean, yeah, it's 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 not just down to Michigan, Ohio State. Obviously, we've you could you could uh, go a little bit uh, gutsy and go Penn State. Not not super gutsy, but for me, it, it was between Michigan and Ohio State. I mean, ultimately, and it just as a toss up. Like, man, I I have to pick, I guess, because it's the episode. But I really don't have much of an opinion. I'm just gonna go Ohio State because. You know, I think they were, I know they, they lost head to head, but you could argue the last two years, they've been overall the better team. And, you know, you saw it last year and how they fared against Georgia in the, in the playoff. It's, I just think they kind of had one off game against Michigan. Um, and it's just, I, I think the defense, uh, another year under Jim Knowles is going to continue to get a little better. Um, and offensively, you just, whether it's Kyle McCord, Devin Brown, like you just trust, uh, oh. Ryan yeah. Day, those no receivers. What, there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the receiving core is absolutely yeah. insane. Running, Running backs, backs are great. Like, they're yeah. just, they're just loaded. They do lose, you know, both yeah. t- starting tackles. That's offensive that is a concern. Line. Yeah, O line's a concern, but that um, two and allow on the defense is fun. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah. got, they've recruited so well. It's just, I don't know. To me, they're still, it's like they're still Ohio State, and I know Michigan has won the Big Ten the last two years, but I still, my my gut is to always just is to go Ohio State still. Maybe, you know, I'll look stupid for the third year in a row here, but we'll see. Yeah. Who do you have in the West? Did you... Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, like Ryan said, it's like, eh. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> exactly. Who cares? <laughs> uh, I, have, I have Wisconsin. I don't know. I just, I like Phil Longo. I, I just think Mordecai is such a, an improvement to Graham Mertz um, and mm. Fickle's teams, Wisconsin as well, always have good defenses, so. And they host Iowa. That was kind of a tiebreaker for me. Yeah, yeah. I um. So the the East is so hard. I waffled like because I you wanted all, to pick I was, Penn State, didn't you? Or, no, or, I. That's my thing. Is yeah. Because so I first was like all three. I'm like flipping a coin on all three, 
And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a stand and I'm going to get rid of Ohio State because okay. I'm saying there is a chance the quarterback play takes a drop after losing CJ Stroud. We just, we just, mm-hmm. we don't know. I mean, I know it's Ryan Day, and believe me, I wouldn't be surprised if McCord is in New York at the end of the year with with the immense talent they have and the talent he has. But there's some challenges, the offensive line, even though Kevin Wilson wasn't the man, he, he's he gone for their offensive coordinator. He went to Tulsa to be the head coach. So, And they, they have the toughest crossover game. They play at Wisconsin, if that ends up meaning anything. So then I was like, okay, well, I got Michigan and Penn State, and I wanted to take Penn State so bad I just didn't have the stones because of Drew Aller. And really the reason that I am going to take Michigan is because I personally think J.J. McCarthy – is is going to take that next step um the the problem with him with early on was they didn't they didn't spread it out much they weren't they didn't they weren't that productive down the field that really improved the last few games of the year that was one of the reasons they beat ohio state they opened it up for him um so i do think he can he can improve get more uh, bigger chunk plays they've got donovan edwards and uh and uh, blake quorum like great great running back duo i just i I went with uh, Michigan there. They got Cornelius Johnson, Roman Wilson on the outside. And their first four games are a, a pathetic. So I think they're really going to get some confidence with that Harbaugh and go. Um, well, they no, get Ohio State in Ann Arbor. Well, he's he's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that news changed or whatever. Yeah. 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 And they get Ohio whatever. State in Ann Arbor. Doesn't so matter. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I wanted Penn State, but I, I took Michigan there. And I'm with you. I, I took Wisconsin because of that. that uh, I was between Wisconsin and Iowa, but I like that they host Iowa. Okay. Okay. Iowa's got a little QB injury issue. Maybe McNamara. They say it's yeah. a soft oh, really? issue. I didn't see that. Well, they he was injured. He left practice so, uh, in, like, this past week, and I think he's going to be held out a little while. But it, it's not supposed to be like a structural thing, yeah. just soft tissue, maybe like pulled a hamstring or something. But yeah. They got Eric All, Kayla Johnson at running back. Like They got pieces to be better. Do it, yeah. Ferentz. Yeah. Well, they also lose some stud linebackers, but yeah. Um, anyways, uh, Michigan for me in the East. Uh, just too much talent, man. They they just arguably best offensive I mean, line in the yeah, country. They won it last year, and they return yeah. a ton. So that's, yeah, yeah, there's just kind no, of an yeah. Ohio State. I could no problem if you pick Ohio State. You know, like of course they could definitely do it. They're Ohio State. They dom- dominate the Big and Ten. And Michigan for, hosts Ohio State again. I if. Maybe I should have made that my tiebreaker, but I didn't. Yeah. Well, it's okay. You never know. Um, all right. So for the West, I'm taking Illinois. Yeah. yeah they're going to, they're going to win. I it. figured. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just, it's wide open, man. I don't see a team that's like cl- anywhere near head and shoulders above anybody else. And I just, I don't know. I feel like uh, with their culture, it kind of maybe the K State kind of Chris Kleiman type of deal. Like, you know what you're going to get from Illinois and they know like the players just know what they're supposed to job their, their job is. They know their system. They know what they're supposed to do. Wisconsin doesn't know that I was going to try to shake things up a little bit offensively. It, it could be bad. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like I'm just going to try to air it out. Cause I need 25 points per game, man. Like yeah. what if they just like all of a sudden just starts changing their culture a little bit. Cause they need to score points and it just sucks. It just blows up in their face. Like, I don't know, maybe it doesn't work out that great. So you know, I, I think there's question marks there. Illinois, I know what I'm going to get from them. Great defense, smart offense that runs the ball well. Tough, hard nosed team. Um, so, you know, I, I think people Burt. underrate. Yeah, they underrate, uh, underestimate Burt. He, he's just, he's a Big Ten football coach, man. And you may have said it, but who do you have winning in the title game? I have, no, <laughs> I, 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 Michigan. Made it beat oh, again. okay, okay. Yeah. Neither. I'm not, I was, Illinois, you know, I, I mean, I like go. them, but uh, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's really a battle to see who gets fourth place. I guess maybe I'm picking Illinois for that, but they, they're not top three. Okay. But also picking Illinois, I didn't mention that because their schedule, they avoid Ohio state and Michigan and they get uh, Penn state at home. That's nice. So that's like that about as nice. good as you can do, you know? Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that does it for our Big Ten preview. Thanks for checking out this episode of the College Football Bros. Uh, we will be back next episode to preview the, f- you know, maybe the final year of something called the Pac-12. <laughs> yeah.